it was an important contribution when, for example, the DX7, the first all-digital synthesizer, became available and it connected up to a small computer and for a couple thousand dollars you could have a pretty powerful little workstation. And uh, Jean-Claude Bisset, who was my close colleague all these years, we both started work in 1964, he at Bell Labs and I here, he started work with Max Matthews. We started working on a book exploring psychoacoustics perception using the DX7. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. And we had some really exciting examples showing various things like uh, missing fundamentals and how you build attacks and how you put what the programmers of the DX7 would call stuff into the sound, meaning noise at the right point. All these things that the ears tend so much to as details that are important to making a sound live. But what happened was Yamaha then had another product, and so they dropped the X7 as a... They didn't want to promote it, so we had no support then to write the book because they wanted output that would encourage use of their newer machines. That's how they made their money, of course, so it's natural. But anyway, there's no doubt that uh, the DX7 with a computer democratized music. Until then, we had to have many hundreds of thousand dollar systems to be able to do this, and all of a sudden, for a little bit of money, people could do wonderful things. <laughs> 